I'm so excited for today's video because I'm comparing two different makeup applicators. We have air makeup brush versus vibrating makeup brush. I figured, you know what? Let's compare the two. This right here is the Michael Todd Sonic Blend Pro. You guys saw me comparing this to the cheap one from Target, the Spa Sciences. This right here is a mineral air system with their little makeup drops, the drop inside. But the reason why we really wanna test this one-to-one -one is because they're saying this type of brush head and the vibration, the movements of this makeup brush, you're supposed to get 3D airbrush flawless finish with any kind of makeup. Obviously, we're gonna put the makeup inside here, a couple of drops, and we're gonna do the same amount of drops on the other side with the makeup brush. Let's do it. If you guys wanna see the full in-depth review of this right here, I also did a wear test. I'll have the video in the comment section or in the description box for you. So like I said, this is by Mineral Air. You do get a full system. You get the cleaning solution. You get the color of your choice. You get the charger. You basically get the whole kit for $150 versus the brush. This is originally, I believe, $79.99, I believe. But sometimes you can get two of them for um, a sale and then sometimes they get sales going on. So keep a lookout for this. But this is the Sonic Blend Pro. They do have the Sonic Blend, which I believe they're saying the Pro is 30 times faster, something like that. That's the difference. <sighs> okay, let's do this. Left of the side, we'll have the mineral air. Right side, we'll have the vibrating brush. Okay, so all you do is just, once it's fully charged, you put the makeup inside, and then this right here is the little lever where you push down and it turns on. Okay, with the full 10 drops, it looks pretty even. It's a little bit uneven right here because I didn't spray as much product right here. But on the cheeks, you can see a difference. It's definitely very even in comparison to the forehead and most of my face. And it did a pretty good job covering some of these red spots, but I didn't get to cover this spot right here, which we will cover in a little bit once I do this side that we can do like one or two drops on both sides. But you can see it did a pretty good job, really quick. Pretty even, I just feel like you just have to keep moving it. You can't stay in one spot because it's just gonna concentrate most of the product in that area. So like you saw, I was just trying to move as fast as possible on the half of the face. Okay, so we'll do it on the table. I'm gonna clean up the surface right here and we'll do 10 drops and then I'll pick up onto my finger and then we'll pick up the rest with the brush because I wanna make sure it doesn't soak into the brush right away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Wow, this is a lot of makeup. All right, and I'm gonna do it quickly in areas. Second setting. Oh my gosh, there's so much more coverage right away. And I think there's still half left. Wow, look at that difference. Oh my gosh. Wow, there's so much coverage right away. And I still have so much product left over. Wow. Oh, this is kind of blowing my mind how much product is actually wasted when you spray it. You know? I always do. The same thing in painting. Same thing in painting. Spray painting versus rolling or paint, like brush, you know? Like, look at that difference. That's insane. I feel like even the finish looks so much more natural on this side just because it's kind of just pressed into the face versus this, I spray it and then it just kind of sits there. Nothing was pressed to the face. You know what I mean? Like it looks so much more natural on this side versus this side. You want to show them how much product I still have left? Look at that. There's still so much product left. I don't want to waste this makeup <laughs> right here that's sitting on my table. So I'm just going to pick up the rest on my brush. You know what? Let me just, I'm just going to use my fingers and I'm just going to go over this spot right here just a little bit on the neck, make sure it's more even. 
because I didn't get a chance to spray there because the product, you know, disappeared. <laughs> I'm not going to go on the face on this side just because I don't want to disturb it with my brush, but at least get the neck, you know, the jawline. From the close-ups, you could really start seeing the, the fine lines are showing up Yes, already. and they're already extremely visible. I did dermaplane, I wanna say a week and a half ago, so you can see a little bit of peach fuzz, but I feel like the peach fuzz is more prevalent on the airbrush side. Again, it's literally just sitting on the surface. And that's why I always say, if you're going to get airbrush makeup done, either by a professional or yourself, dermaplane, because you will really see all of the peach fuzz on your face because it's literally just sprayed on your face and nobody's patting it in. That's the biggest thing. So let's do the rest of my makeup. I really wanna see if there is going to be a difference with how the makeup is going to apply. How long it's gonna wear. Yeah, and how long it's gonna wear. I do wanna do a wear test as well. I'm gonna quickly do my eyebrows off camera and my mascara and then we'll come back to do the concealer the bronzer, the blush, and the highlight. For concealer, let's go with the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear. I have Fawn 340 and Eggshell 325. I think Eggshell might be a little bit too light, just because the face is a little bit lighter. So let's go with, I might need to mix the two. Just putting a dot on both sides. I'm gonna use my finger to help warm it into the skin. I just really like this concealer because it's really inexpensive, it blends incredibly with any kind of applicator. Your finger, makeup brush, like a concealer brush, sponge. I will say one thing, it does have fragrance. Kind of smells like hairspray. For contour, I really want to use the Patrick Ta, but I've just been using it, I feel like, in every single video. So you know what? Let's do the Dior backstage. I haven't used this in the video since I did the Dior makeup, but I've just been really loving it. This is the Universal 01 palette. And I'm going to use this shade right here to contour. Where's my brush? I'm using more of like an angled brush. This one is by It Cosmetics. Their airbrush soft focus blush brush, but I use it for my contour. And for every step, I'm doing the same exact thing on both sides. So for blush, we're gonna use the Ulta Beauty, their Coral Crush Blush Trio. That's a mouthful of a name. I really want to go with this shade right here. This is their Matte Warm Peach. For some reason, I feel like it's blending a little more easier on the vibrating makeup brush side versus the airbrush. It's a little more even looking too, and I feel like there's a lot more color depositing. On which side? On the vibrating makeup brush side. Like it looks way more airbrushed versus this side. It looks like I'm using different makeup on both sides when I'm not. For highlighter, Catrice. More Than Glow Highlighter in shade 20 Supreme Rose Beam. This one is so stunning. And I'm using, I think this was a limited edition Sonia Kashuk brush. Not even sure what this brush is. Yeah, something with this side. The makeup is going so smooth, so effortless, so even, and so intense like right away versus this side I feel like even right here, I'm kind of seeing some exaggerated areas, like my wrinkles. They're like exaggerated versus this side, everything's just so smooth. I think because when you apply the airbrush makeup using the air system, like you have to have a very smooth, relaxed face. That's why I think it's better for somebody to do it for you. That way you're not, you're not like moving your face a lot. You're not, I was gonna say smizing. <laughs> not smizing. Basically like scrunching your face. Wow, I'm like shocked that I can actually see a difference with this. And for some reason, when applying the bronzer, the blush, we were having a hard time making it even on both sides. I felt like I had to use so much more product on the left versus the right. For lip, I'll be using the Buxom, their pillow pout in shade Cuddle Me. Makeup is on, and I think both sides look very even, but you can see a difference, especially up close. And obviously the application when I was applying stuff to the face, using the exact same products and the exact same tools. For some reason, it was a lot easier to apply to the right side. And I honestly do think there's a big reason why a lot of people like to pat the makeup into the face, even using their fingers to warm up the product, using a brush, a beauty blender, and they kind of really take their time to really blend the product into the skin, into the face, versus just spraying makeup on your face. The first thing we saw was it uses so much makeup and it doesn't give you the amount of coverage that you get versus the vibrating brush. The second, it was, I feel like it was a little more even 
with the vibrating brush. With the spray, you kind of have to keep moving over and over again, and then once you're done, that's it. You have to put more product in. And it's not as forgiving. Exactly, it's not as forgiving. It just really sits on the surface of your skin. It sits on your fine lines, it sits on your dry spots, on your pimples, your acne, any kind of problem areas, it sits there. Even peach fuzz. I don't think peach fuzz is a problem area. Everybody has peach fuzz, unless you do replaying like every single day. But it really just exaggerates the peach fuzz. Interesting. Man, the cheeks look good on both sides, but they definitely look better on this side. The wrinkles that I have right here, yes, they're minimal, but I do have them because I really took my time to blend in those areas. It looks so smooth and airbrush versus this side, I can actually see the lines. It looks like I was, I don't know if you ever had a spray tan <laughs> and you're smiling and it looks like, you know, <laughs> I was out in the wind and I got the spray tan. So that's, I will say it does exaggerate those certain areas. If your face is not very smooth and relaxed, when you are applying the airbrush makeup. All right, so let's go on with our day, see how the makeup wears. Hopefully it's gonna melt in a little bit more and become more seamless with my face. I'll see you in a little bit. Final update. I did do some videos. I did a shot before we had dinner and then one shot right after dinner just to see if it would look different around the mouth area. It definitely didn't look as bad on the forehead before dinner and after dinner. It looked pretty even, but Andre also got a really good close up of the face and he said everything just looked really even. Neither side looked like it was wearing faster or worse or slower. So looking at it now, <clears throat> excuse me, we want a bike ride in downtown Nashville because the weather is just so perfect right now. And I was wearing a helmet, but I'm looking at my forehead and this is what's really noticeable to me. When I'm doing this, when I kind of squint, my face looks so crepey and so dry. <laughs> Even though it's shiny, it just looks so dry and not flattering whatsoever. And if I look up, you can really see the lines. Just because this foundation, it's so, drying on the skin. Like I said, it's gonna attach itself to every little texture, every single little anything on your face. If you're super smooth, it's gonna look phenomenal. But if you have any kind of dry spots, if you have any kind of fine lines, it's really going to exagger exaggerate everything. So keep that in mind. I do wanna say, I think the pores look a little bit better on this side because they're a little bit more blended, but honestly, it's wearing pretty even on both sides. I do have a little bit more coverage on this side just because we started with a little bit more coverage, even though we used far less product. But yeah, it wore very even. I just think it's, really all about the amount of product that you use. You use far less product with a brush for something like this. And then you get so much more coverage with less product. You're not wasting as much product. And then every other product applied on top, for some reason, it just was a lot more even, a lot more pigment with less product. Again, less product, but you're getting a lot more pigment. For some reason on the left side with the airbrush side, you used a lot more product, and you didn't get as much pigment. So that's really fascinating. I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you guys for watching this little experiment with me, spending the day, and I'll see the next one very soon. <laughs> Bye.